Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Rogue Trader with me, Brigitte Dahlin. Let's speak to Pascal. My apologies. 19% of my processing power is engaged in the analysis of my tech comrade's memory. My response time may be longer than usual. Pascal raises his eyes from a data slate connected to an augmetic. The augmetic used to be housed inside the skull of Tarsus, the tech priest who perished on your ship. Have you found anything out? The data is scarce. His identification code is the same as mine, and his memory contains data confirming that the assassination did take place. Unfortunately, some of his memory was damaged by pulses broadcast by his battle harness. I can assert with some confidence that he was who he claimed to be, and that he served the Deus Mechanicus earnestly and eagerly. My study of the minds of the tech comrades, Abel, Tarsus, and Dements, has revealed an anomalous similarity between the patterns of damage their memories sustained, what I attributed to cognitive idiosyncrasies, synaptic damage, and the distorted action of scrap code, may be the result of a different kind of influence. The undecryptable data fragments of their memory arrays are mysteriously symmetrical. He gave off the impression of a paranoid madman. Notwithstanding his permanent state of agony, he was not cognitively dysfunctional. His desire to immediately destroy the object he had deemed profane was partly dictated by his engrammatic augmentics, which were receiving imperatives from his battle harness. In light of the oddness of our matching identification codes, I find merit in his hypothesis as to the existence of a clandestine malevolent agent or conspiracy operating inside our fraternity. Who do you think was behind the assassination? No data available. I will hypothesize that the assassination was instigated by an enemy of the Blessed Amanat's doctrine. I accept the possibility that the assassins were targeting me, only to be led astray by Tarsus and my own identical identifiers. I am concerned about the fate of Archmagus Amanat. According to Opticon 2.2, he went missing in the wake of the incident on an Arc Mechanicus, the Hermetico. Information about that ship and its perishing has been purged from the archives. I accept the possibility that the incident on the ship, the concealed data, and the assassination have all been part of a single conspiracy. You were hunted too. Remember our meeting on Rykab by Norris, the people who posed as heretics? The statement is true. There were also the bodies we discovered in the hallowed electrodynamic synovium of unknown infiltrators who had posed as members of the cult of the Final Dawn. There is merit to the hypothesis that all carriers of Magos Hanayman's identification code are targets of persecution. Are you not surprised that Emirnat's words had such an effect on Opticon 22? I was not knowledgeable as to how popular Blessed Amanat's teaching was in exploratory circles. The Cognizant's fleet is massive. His ideas might have found a larger following on its periphery than in the Mother Squadron. Has it ever occurred to you that all these events may be part of Amanat's plan? That is a valid hypothesis, but not a very likely one. Its truth value is irrelevant, as it does not contradict the necessity of establishing the fate of Archmagus Amanat. The Tech Priest Vox is raspier than usual. I don't know that my character would say this, but I do want to explore the dialogue. We could pretend that he's saying faith in anything but the God Emperor could be dangerous. Amanat was a believer, and he caused a schism. Parsis was a believer, he turned into a zealot. Faith can be dangerous. Of course faith is dangerous. Faith is the prerogative of the spirit, and a spiritless mind is an enemy of all existence. Without faith, there is no meaning in anything, 
no point to any aspirations or limitations. But faith can take different forms. Haskell looks at you askance, and the voice from his Vox synthesizer takes on an otherworldly profundity. The form of prohibitions established by unknown elders. The form of an audacious violation of those prohibitions. The form of following dogma or of schism. The form of following the cycle or of discontinuing the cycle. In a system with two courses of action, schism is inevitable. And only one of these paths will be true, as truth is discreetly separate from untruth. Haskell's visor seems to almost pierce you with its glow. Did Amanat believe the elders to be in error? Amanat did not reject any one specific prohibition, but found their cumulative effect to be oppressive. The system of rigid limitations had confined seekers of knowledge to a circular track, spelling doom for the thinking mind. And that cycle of repetition had to be broken. That was why he was dubbed the Messiah of Discontinuing. I could justify options two or three. Two is more of the blind faith. Three is more of a self-reflective faith. Neither one's really out of place. Go with option three, because we are a rogue trader and we do have the authority to kind of dictate faith and dogma in our protectorate, so it may be more fitting. My faith is more than a mere set of rules. It consists of ideals which sometimes come into conflict with dogma, have been given the gift of the will to set the dogma straight. The Omnisire has bestowed upon us the supreme mission, the quest for knowledge. The fact of its existence confirms that reason is yet to comprehend and quantify the universe in its entirety. This precludes the existence of any prohibition that could be considered universally relevant. All limitations need their exceptions, yet exceptions belie the inviolability of prohibitions. Pascal's voice takes on a thoughtful tone, and its otherworldly might peters out. Perhaps you'll be able to find out more. I will continue my research into the Blessed Martyr's memory with all due reverence. I must take my leave. May your labors be effective. And fruitful. And now we go to Dargonis. Okay, so we have the Von Valencia's Palace for the main quest, and I assume the Administratum is for Jai's quest. So let's do that first. We'll show our romantic partner that she takes priority. Work can wait. Well, maybe not, because we aren't going to the Administratum. Then again, we'll probably do a lot of waiting. We're going to see the inefficiency of the bureaucracy of the Imperium here, most likely. My application number 232-05-668X is awaiting processing by the Master of Seals. Outcome level C. Petition rejected. Turn after turn, the unceasing stream of petitioners pours through the palace doors. The strong-willed wait patiently while the weak will try everything they can to get ahead of the others. I always keep my options open. Not too many petitioners today. Last week they had to put on an extra shift to cope with the crowds. Also our formation is messed up.
Greeting uh, protocol. Welcome to the palace of the Adeptus Administratum. Identifying. Your lordship. Please follow me. The palace of the Adeptus Administratum is a bulwark of order in the Von Valancey's Protectorate. I treat every citizen as suspect until they have proved they can be trusted. Are they finished building another dozen levels on the east wing of the palace? When I joined the queue, the plans hadn't even been approved. <laughs> Rise to the top. That's or pretty get standard. Left in the dust. I uh, check in coordinates. Continue in this direction to reach your destination. Your visit has been logged. The towering piles of papers and endless shelves heaving with ledgers evoke special reverence for the laws of the God Emperor and the hearts of the servants of the Adeptus Administratum. Chronicle of Case Number 6830270-LA2987 Dash B4 126. The parchment looks grease marked and old, as so it has passed through many, many pairs of hands. Servant of the Imperium Elias Tantanal filed a declaration with the Adeptus Administratum that he is the sole heir of House Tantanal and the legal sovereign of the northern continent of the planet Ergona Rex. According to the submission, Elias Tantanal cannot exercise his right to his inheritance, as the wider family tree includes an individual who shares his full legal name. According to the petitioner, this individual is his great-grandfather. Given the loss of documents confirming the death of the second claimant to the inheritance, Elias Tantanal is petitioning for a confirmation of this relative's death and permission for the enactment of his inheritance rights. So I'm going to speculate real quick. Elias Tantanal is going to die while this petition is being processed, and it's going to be either his children or his grandchildren that's going to continue it by the end. A petition received. Preliminary review period up to 15 Terran cycles, so 15 years already. Forwarded for review 23 Terran cycles, 4 turns from date of submission. Request for a copy of the death certificate of Elias Tantanal sent to the archive of the Departmento Munitorum. 28 Terran cycles, 2 turns from the date of submission. Petition rejected. 39 Terran cycles, 11 turns from date of submission. Second petition sent to the archive. 44 Terran Cycles, 4 turns from date of submission. Petition approved. 52 Terran Cycles from date of submission. Alright, so these aren't additive, this is just, um, how long it's taken since the beginning. So to get started, it took 15 years. We're currently at 52 years. After 48 repeated submissions from Elias Tantanal, a second request was sent to the archive. 79 Terran Cycles, 7 turns from the date of submission. Copy of death certificate of Elias Tantanal, great-grandfather to the petitioner, received. 84 Terran cycles, 6 turns from the date of submission. Documents forwarded for formulation of decision granting permission for the enactment of the inheritance rights of Elias Tantanal, sole heir of his house and legal sovereign of the northern continent of the planet Ergona Rex. 101 Terran cycles, 5 turns from date of submission. Death of Elias Tantanal recorded by servants of the Adeptus Administratum. Place of death, Q16. He died waiting. <laughs> he died while waiting in line. A will's legacies and inheritances. Wedding Hall, Palace of the Adeptus Administratum, Dargonis. 106 Terran cycles, two turns from date of submission. Death certificate of Elias Tantanal sent to the archive of the Departmento Munitorum. 114 Terran cycles, 10 turns from date of submission. Petition for the enactment of inheritance rights following the death of Elias Tantanal and for the issuance of a copy of the death certificate received from the deceased daughter, Eliza, Eliza Tantanal. 114 Terran cycles, 11 turns from date of submission. <laughs> Keep your wits about you. I told you we'd see the inefficiency of the uh, bureaucracy. Inkwell Lavalia the Impartial. First Master of Seals of the Coronus Expanse. Sacred Scroll, the 1005 Admonitions of Master of Inventory Abexilis? 
to the adeptus to the adepts of the administratum. So I say adeptus administratum again. Departmento Exacto Report. Auditing and reissuance of the Great Tithe Payment documentation for GX-75021 and GX-76021. In the last 2,836 Terran cycles, entries mentioning planet GX-75021, 284,356 found, including copies. Entries mentioning planet GX-76021, one found, including copies. So I think this is going to cover a typo and how much trouble that can cause. There's an entire book, uh, 15 hours, that the, the plot starts because of a typo or an error by someone in the Adeptus Administratum. Also one of my favorite books. A full list confirmed by the Adeptus Terra of all planetary objects located within the territory of the illustrious Rogue Trader Dynasty Avon Valencius received, was received 164 Terran cycles ago. After careful rec uh, reconciliation of the data, it was found that planetary object GX-76021 has not been included in the collection of the Imperial Tithe for the last 2,836 Terran cycles. In the same period, the planetary object GX-75021 was included in the taxable sites but did not pay its Imperial Tithe thereby failing to uphold its sacred obligations to the Imperium. Subsequent analysis of archive documentation revealed the absence of documentation confirming the existence of planetary object GX-75021, unlike planetary object GX-76021, which was discovered in files dating back more than 2,836 cycles ago. Based on an internal inventory investigation, the Adeptus Administratum decrees that any mention of planetary object GX-75021 must be replaced with GX-76021. The governor of planetary object GX-76021 must pay the tithe for the preceding 2,836 Terran cycles within a period of no more than 50 Terran cycles. Jeez Louise. So Imperial tithes are usually resources, it depends on the planet too, and uh, manpower. I think every planet has to give up manpower for the uh, Imperial Guard. Anyway, and in the event of non-payment of the tithe within the prescribed period, planetary object GX-76021 will be seized for the needs of the Adeptus Administratum. 95% of the population will be immediately subjected to servitude and perpetuous for the benefit of the Imperium. Note. Precise reckoning of the tithe amount required in Throne Gelts is appended to this report. Note. An advisory letter has been sent to the Departmento Munitorum, recommending that the Departmento conduct its own internal inventory investigation to determine whether planetary object GX-76021 has fulfilled its sacred obligation to provide recruits for the Astra Militarum. Yeah, so there's no way that planet would be able to pay its tithes from the past almost 3,000 years and 50 years. So it'll almost assuredly be seized by the Adeptus Ministratum and all that because of a typo. A quick save. A sermon of Adeptus Ferdinand IX and Expositor 5618 reads, Submit to the letter of the law, for it is the will of the God Emperor. We'll talk to the Master of Seals. An ancient looking woman in a, a voluminous robe peers at you critically through her ocular lenses when you descend into the bowels of her bureaucratic domain. Another noble bypassing the queue under the pretext of just wanted to ask. All you highborn ever want is just to ask. But what about protocol? That's what I'm asking. Who is going to follow protocol? Attention. Oh, I didn't get to read that one. Jai glances at you and whispers. What? So I paid off a few clerks to let us skip the queue, Shireen. Your time is more important to me than any little formalities. Well, very well. Don't just stand there. You're here now. Or do you think the Master of Seals has nothing better to do than receive unexpected visitors? The old woman beckons over a servo skull floating nearby. Begin entry. A current hour, current turn, current cycle, 41st millennium. 
Metal manipulators immediately begin feverishly clacking, taking dictation. Don't you want to know who I am? Donald Von Valancius, sole heir of rogue trader Theodora Von Valancius. May the throne's radiance guide her path to the other side, or on the other side. In a practice move, the Master of Seals twists her magnifying ocular lens and examines the ledger in front of her. The sole person to publicly assert their claim to be precise. Abelard Versarian. Goldman directs her gaze over your shoulder. Seneschal and right hand of the now departed Theodore von Valancius. And now, and of her now extant heir. The old woman smacks her lips in satisfaction and nods curtly. Of course I know who is standing before me. It is my job to know. Jai shifts, deliberately putting her jeweled augmentic on display. Does that mean that my reputation has preceded me as well, esteemed Damar? No, I've received no reports about you. Well, what is this place? The Master of Seals raises her eyebrows in surprise. You're in the very heart of the palace of the Adeptus Administratum. Day and night, hundreds of thousands of pre uh, prefects, ordinates, scribes, servants, and servitors carry out their duties to humanity and the Von Valencius dynasty here, never setting foot outside its boundaries for decades at a time. But knowledge comes through comparison. Their entire world's belonging to the Administratum, so this palace is but a humble cog, the blessed machine of the Imperium. Tell me about yourself. I am the Law. All right, Judge Dredd. And I oversee order in this section of the Coronus Expanse, as well as on worlds of the Von Valencius Protectorate, in accordance with ancient covenants made with your ancestors. I hold the power to grant petitioners what they seek, and to punish criminals for failing to carry out the Imperium's will. Jai continues in a whisper. She's ancient enough herself. Look at her. She's a bona fide living mummy. Tell me about the work of the Adeptus Administratum. The Master of Seals tuts in displeasure. One would think the Protectorate's heir has no care for his tongue, if he is so willing to wag it to the point of blistering. However, I, despised servant of the Emperor that I am, do not possess the gift of unallocated time. Let us proceed to the matter of your application. My companion wishes to obtain a Mercatum Tabula Officiali. The Master of Seals peers over her ocular lenses at Jai in disbelief, then she looks at you. I take it you are her sponsor. In that case, you must submit a written application in conformity with template number 404.01, as well as written permission for the processing and notarization of the personal data of your most sacred person uh, personage. Without it, I cannot issue Mistress Hidari. Mistress Hidari, the form for collecting the seals required to obtain the Mercatum Tabula Officiali, the certificate of an official trade representative. At these words, the saccharine smile drops from Jai's face. Seals. What seals? We'll discuss that when Donald von Valencius has prepared the primary documentation. Abelard lets out a stoic sigh and rolls his eyes. You get the feeling that this is not his first personal interaction with the administratum bureaucracy. Nor is it his second. <laughs> There's no way of getting around these formalities. Fear the wrath of the immortal one, your lordship. What would become of your protectorate, or even the Imperium itself, if every person did what you're proposing? No Lex Imperialis, Volume 249, Paragraph 18-2. Amendment of the 12th cycle of the previous millennium clearly states... Actions that circumvent the sacred law of the Imperium in pursuit of personal gain are a manifestation of human weakness, which is subject to eradication. Could you hand out the paperwork on my behalf? I will pay. She mutters something waspishly under her breath, ignoring your question entirely. And if I refuse, then I'm afraid Mistress Hidari will never receive her much desired certificate, and I'll be obliged to levy a fine against your noble name. For wasting the valuable time of the Master of Seals. Shireen, I know that Ozzy have thwarted our plans, and that unforeseen circumstances have arisen like... like... never mind. So the esteemed Damar wants us to fill in a couple of forms. I'll do that with great pleasure. Uh, we have to do it, right? Uh, complete application form number 404.01. The perfectly sharpened quill scratches pleasantly on the parchment, 
But for the first few minutes, the obfuscatory phrasing, footnotes, amendments, you're forced to write out the same details over and over about you, the Protectorate, Theodora von Valencius, Jai, and also every living person who bears your family name. If you do not know all the required information, you must complete supplementary forms. It was like applying for a job online. The Master of Seals nods in approval and stows the scroll into a tube labeled with your name. Next to the consent form for the processing and notarization of the personal data of your most sacred personage. <laughs> a sigh forlornly. The Master of Seals animated, animatedly draws her a Kajita quill or Kagita quill across the surface of a data slate, paying no attention to you. I give you written consent on the presented form. The scroll is whipped away into another tube by the Master of Seals. Protocol executed. Application received. Processed. Approved. The Servo Skull scribe taps out each word after its mistress's pronouncement. Come on, esteemed Damar. What's that you were saying about seals? The old woman unhurriedly holds out a printed scroll to Jai. Here is your document, Mistress Hidari. Unfortunately, it does not have legal force. I can certify it as a sacred Mercatum Tabula Officiali once it has received two seals of approval. They are easy to obtain, and the Imperium Court Administratum Servitors have been handing out or handling such tasks for over 150 cycles. There is one such servitor here on Dargonus, in the Rogue Trader's Palace. The second is duty bound to keep the seal in the Telecos Epsilon system. Now why can the seals not be affixed here in the, in the Administratum Palace? According to Amendment 3-C8, implemented by Prefectus Astinia II of Dargonus, one of the seals must be kept in the palace of the ruler of the Von Valencius Protectorate, remaining a symbol of the unbreakable link between the Sacred Warrant and the Adeptus Administratum. The second seal, the ocular lenses perched on her nose click as she raffles through moldering scrolls with her wrinkled fingers. It's held in the Telecos Epsilon system in accordance with Decree OL-008ZN. Unfortunately, after a fire 200 cycles ago, all that remains of the original decree is an addendum certified by an unknown adept with the initials AA. No instructions repealing this decree were ever received from Holy Terra, therefore the seal remains where it ought to be. It was a time during my earlier years of service when I performed the duties of a secretary in charge of logistics reports at a local administratum office. Your words, Master of Seals, bring back memories of which I am not the least bit fond. Why am I obliged, why am I obliged to handle such a task myself? Decree 424, Clause 79, Amendment 8 of the Law on Certifying an Mercatum, a Tabula Officiali with Sponsorship of a Bearer of the Warrant of Trade. Ah, <sighs> so wordy. Uh, the sponsoring rogue trader must be present at the palace at the placing and certifying of each seal. If this requirement is not met, the document will be deemed invalid. Find administratum servitors and have them place two seals of approval. The goal is clear. The Master of Seals nods with satisfaction. Please do return once you have prepared the documents. Oh, so one's on this planet, one is elsewhere. Let us not dawdle. We have been to the Telecos Epsilon system. Just real quick, let's see where it's at. Pretty sure it was to the south. It's right here. Oh, Yanis. Okay. Speaking of Yanis. Oh, we need to head to the uh, Yanis. That works out.
Alright, so a couple rank three projects we can do here. And we can do the reaping here. So the reaping. Not even the sprawling agri complexes of Yanis can cover the whole of the planet's fertile expanse. Gargantuan tracked mega harvesters will come to their aid. They will wander the planet for months, each one operated by its assigned clan of serfs who are born, live, and die in the bowels of these great machines. These giants will reap harvest with their toothed jaws, break open the soil with their plasteel plows, create the swampy lowlands dry with their thirsty hydro pumps, spoon the water forth down upon the arid hills. We get five provisions and one profit factor. Alright, so Inferno. Let's see which one is the most roleplay appropriate. I don't want to lose efficiency, though. So neither one of these really stand out roleplay-wise. I think Inferno is what we'll go for. I like the Armored Prowl upgrade as well. So the Megos uh, Metallurg Metallurg Metallurgy, so is it Metallurgicus? Metallurgicus, it's hard to say. Are proposing a massive tectonic plate detonation to awaken the planet's great volcanoes. Smelting shops house inside the their flaming vents can produce plastic of incredible purity. The earthquakes, tectonic instability, and ash clouds that will forever envelop the sky of Calva Gamma are a small price for such a success. So we get the Armored Prowl feature. This front-focused armor design concentrates the thickest adamantine armor plates on the ship's prowl compartment, allowing the ship to break through heavy enemy fire during a relentless push. So it gives you plus four to the prowl plating. The ram of the flagship causes internal fires. The number of fires depends on the size of the target. We'll get plus two profit factor, a times 12 plasteel and minus 3 security. Well, we did make it to Dargonis this time, just not to the palace, our, our palace yet. We've been to the Administratum Palace. Alright, we got Roaring Thunder. The Thunderhammer Thunderhammer. This Thunderhammer. Yeah, I'm reading all that Adeptus Administratum nonsense threw me off. This Thunderhammer deals plus three damage and grants a plus ten percent stacking chance to stun an enemy for one turn for each point of the enemy's deflection. A successful toughness resistance test negates this effect. We got ourselves a new hammer. It does more damage. A uh, five across the board. Appearance doesn't change. Disappointing. Okay, I'm going to call it here, and next time we will visit the Von Valencia's Palace and deal with the main quest on Dargonis. Then we have business back on Yanis. But either way for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.